problem was I was trying to get go to the cow meeting. It makes a difference. Okay. I humbly apologize. Christian, um, the big question for the evening is um, how close are we on the budget? Okay, so we got a lot of information um, for y'all and we're going to kind of go through it, but I guess sort of I'll start big picture. Um, we We've gone in and we've looked at some of our key revenues and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to make some good estimates for where we think they're going to be. And we'll go through that in just a, in just a few minutes to kind of tell you those revenues and how we cut them. Um, and we've also found out that we've got some large increases on our, um, like our health insurance, about a half a million dollars there. Um, We've also, um, we're still waiting to hear back on our defined benefit plan for the, the pension. Um, there's an actuarial, actuarial report that we usually have by this time, and we haven't got it yet, um, that tells us what our required contribution is. Um, an increase of 6%, which is similar to what last year's increase was, has been built into this budget. Um, but we don't have that number yet, so that could go up or go down. Um, so I guess big picture is the way that where we're at right now, it looks like we're going to have to, looks like we're going to have to use maybe a half a million dollars of our reserves to balance the budget, which we haven't had to do that in a very long time. Um, so we have... We've cut as much as we could, um, that we think we can. I mean, we could always go back and revisit some of the CIP and some other things, but I think we all are aware that, you know, we're going to have some lasting effects of um, this shutdown and revenues are going to suffer. So um, for now, there's about a half a million dollars of reserves that we're going to use to balance the budget. So that's, that's kind of big picture. And that's, in and that's in anticipation of projected decreased revenue? Yes. So um, do I have, do I have control of this or either me or Jared, we both have the same documentation, um, probably saved up on our screen. So. Who do you Maybe want to have control? control Jared, because Jared's been doing all these. Okay. Give you can give it to Jared because he's been going through all these. Right, let, let me ask a question while we're getting to Jared. That's on 2000 FY21 budget for FY20. What um, what are we looking at having to dip into reserves this year? Do we have a number for that or an estimate? Um, I don't have an estimate for you on what we're going to have to use of reserves this year because um, there's a, I was working on that today and I have a couple spreadsheets that I can show y'all in just a, in just a minute. Um, we are, I, I can, I've identified some of our revenues that are, you know, they're probably not going to recover um, and we're going to have shortfalls on. Um, but our expenses on the expense side, you know, everybody knows our single biggest expense is payroll and, you know, payroll and, um, benefit related costs. Those are, those are probably not going to go down a lot, um, for the rest of the year. I mean, we might have some decreases in our healthcare because people are kind of staying at home. They're not going to the doctor. They're not doing elective surgeries and various other things, but the biggest cost is, um, is going to, is, the payroll is going to continue and in our original budget for 20 um, based on how the year has been going you know if things kind of we're, we're looking at about another three hundred thousand dollars it's going to have to be spent on health care over what we budgeted so um i knew you were going to ask me how much we're going to have to use for reserves but it just kind of depends on you know, we, we haven't paid all the bills that are out there. 
that we've already incurred costs on and you know depends on if the departments are following the instructions that were you know given out by the mayor and by Tammy at our staff meeting a couple weeks ago which is to pretty much halt any unnecessary spending um, so I can you know I mean I know that's not answering your question and I, I just really don't know how I just don't know how bad it's been I don't know how much we have to spend and the information I know we're we're still three months out before that number comes in but yeah I mean there's yeah I think maybe but accounts payable is still you know churning out a ton of invoices every week from things that we've already incurred and we're having to pay and so we haven't really seen a slowdown in the spending yet um so um but i did you know it, so it's not a shock to anybody the mdj um asked some questions um of each of the cities in Cobb county and kind of where they were just what it's how impact this was we were we were vague but i did say in that article that you know we were having shortfalls on our revenue and that um, we were probably going to have to use some of our reserves to get through the remainder of this year so um that's going to be in the paper when mdj runs the article um, and, okay. um, i didn't give a number for that because i didn't want to i don't submitted it yet right it's not due till tomorrow but um i didn't i didn't want to put a number on that because i think there's just still a few unknowns um out there and like i said personnel is the biggest one and you know if we if you know if we're, if we're you know paying the salaries that we're paying now you know for full-time and part-time through the end of the year whether we're working or not you know then um Plus the hazard pay and everything else, you know, those those are all going to be factors that are going to kind of dictate how deep into our reserves we go. All right, how much um, are we seeing people? I mean, we we've we, we've actually agreed to not turn anybody's water and sewer off. Um, right. How much are we seeing that impact? Do you know? I mean, I know that's a broad question, but are we having a hundred people so far? Or are we having two thousand people so far? So I asked Greg that question because we were going to go back to Cobb County and talk to Cobb County um, about maybe some relief from them. And um, I don't have a good answer on that yet because they're also working um, reduced staff downstairs. And so they're not caught up on getting all those payments you know, processed into the system. Um, uh, he said he didn't, you know, that they were still really busy and they were still processing all those checks. And so that, you know, hopefully fingers crossed means that we still have people paying their bills. Um, I know that Landon had, had, you know, part of our um, Smart and Strong um, was related to helping people pay their, um, their water bills. And I think last time we spoke about that, he had not had a lot of people reach out to him for assistance to have somebody, you know, help them pay their bills. And Greg has not, you know, mentioned Greg Van Antwerp downstairs and until the bill and has not mentioned to me um, a lot of conversations with people about, you know, payment structures or anything else. So, um, but he doesn't, like I said, he doesn't have everything entered to the system. So I can't tell you if it's a hundred people or if it's a thousand people that haven't paid their bills. Okay. Uh, right now, though, the, the bottom line of it is, and we'll let Jared move on with his, his little presentation. I don't his little presentation. That's not quite right. But right now, we're looking at probably a half a million shortfall in 2021. Um, yeah, that we're going to have to use our reserves for. So what you can see on the screen now um, is a um, Jared, can you make your little Jared. Can you make your little presentation a little bit? <laughs> Jared, I didn't mean to make it sound like it's not a big deal because it is. Uh, do, you, do you need to see it bigger? Is it too small? Can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah, I can get rid of some of the older stuff here too, which may help us see a little bit more. Hey, at least on my screen, Derek, there's a the uh, over on the right side. You can zoom in your screen.
So, um, does everybody see that now? Yep, I got it. Thanks, Gorgie. That's helpful. So um, the first the first line item there that you can see is property taxes and um, just a little bit of information on that. I spoke to um, Bill Volkman at Cobb County earlier this week and I also sent a message to all of the other finance directors of the cities in Cobb County. I also reached out to a couple of finance directors outside of Cobb County and um, the consensus that we have gotten from everybody is that um, they're going to reduce their anticipated collections by 2%. Cobb County historically has a 97% collection rate. They're going to 95. Uh, Bill Volkman said they might change that and lower that. They have a little bit more time because their budget is, you know, they're not a June 30. They're a, uh, I think they're a September 30 year in. So they've got some more time to with their number of what they're going to collect, but right, right now they're anticipating a 2% reduction. Um, Tammy spoke to the other city administrators on her call um, yesterday, and they said that they were also looking at a 2 to 3% reduction on their collection. So, what that means for Smyrna is that we have historically budgeted at a 98.5 collection rate. And we are going to drop that by two percent and take that to um, ninety-six and a half percent. So, um, as you can see on the screen, if we had um, budgeted with a seven percent increase for the digest, we would have um, projected a uh, tax revenue budget of twenty-five point six million. We are reducing that to. 25.1, which is about a $520,000 um, loss on property taxes. So that, that's a big one. Um, but that's kind of where, that's the basis for that number where that came from. And then you can see um, down the list where some other significant revenues are listed. Alvalorum, the, um, the alcoholic beverage excise tax, and mixed business licenses. Um, we try to go in and look at some of the revenues that we think are going to be more um, sensitive to this shutdown and are going to maybe lag a little bit on, um, you know, we might lose some businesses um, during all of this. And so, you know, maybe the excise tax and the mixed drink tax aren't going to come in. Also, the business licenses, we might lose some businesses. So. Um, we went and, um, and you know, did a 20% cut on our projected revenue. Um, I know that sounds like a big number, but from what we're looking at right now, just over the last you know month of collections that are coming in, and you know based on kind of where we think we're going to be and how long we're going to be in this, um, we're thinking you know 20% is a is a good basis to reduce our projected revenues by um to you know take into account it's going to take a little while for things to get going again um but um the last item on this list is um the transfer in from hotel motel and you know i think most of y'all are aware everybody's aware that nobody's you know staying in hotels and so um the general fund relies on revenue from the hotel motel fund there's a percentage that comes in, and so we've reduced the amount that we would have originally projected for the general fund to receive by, you know, $112,000 from where we would have. So, um, all in total, you can see for general fund for some of the revenues that we think are going to be affected, um, it's about a $1.8 million reduction of where we would have budgeted versus where we're going to budget and then on the hotel motel fund um, there is about a three hundred twenty seven thousand dollar difference from like where we would have budgeted versus where we're going to budget um, because of all of this so what that translates into as i mentioned at the beginning of the call is that we're you know planning using half a million dollars of our reserves to balance the budget uh, for a general fund, and then for the hotel mutual fund, um, we're going to need to use about $134,000 to balance that budget um, for the expenses that are in that line in those line items. 
Does anybody have any questions on any of that? Or Jared, do you have anything you want to add on that? Okay. Chris, any okay. questions? So the top part I get, so we'll, we'll need, you know, roughly 500,000 out of reserves. And uh, what's the bottom part? We'll have to contribute another 133,000 out of reserves to balance the hotel motel. Yeah, the, the hotel motel fund, um, it'll have to go into its reserves, about $134,000. So there's there's reserves in both of these in both of these funds. Um, the the hotel motel fund has you know has got a, a good reserve balance, um, and so does the general fund. Um, so you know, not I think we'll be okay, and hopefully we'll rebound quicker, and we'll see some you know some positive on the revenue, and you know maybe we don't have to use these reserves, but um, we're trying to be conservative and. You know, put it out there and let y'all know that we're going to, we're budgeting to use those reserves to balance the budget. So, in your mind, Kristen, this is these numbers are worst case scenario or close to worst case scenario. They might be they might be a little bit better, but in your y'all's mind, you're making sure that you go uh, for for a significant hit uh, in 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 hopes that it might not be this bad. Um. Yes and no. Um, I think that I think that you know we're making a guess of how long this is going to last, and and you know and trying to be optimistic that we're going to rebound and have revenues come back in. But I spoke to Richard. I was talking to Richard Garland earlier today, um, and you know you've also got you know a little bit of a of a public. Um, hesitance out there, you know, when people are allowed to come back out, you know, are they are they going to rush out and are they going to want to rent um, these facilities or are they going to, you know, wait for longer, you know, to do that? Um, I, I, I don't know. It just kind of depends. You can't predict people's mindset or their moves. Um, there's, a, there's, you know, some big dollars associated with the associations, but Little League, the Smyrna Soccer and all of those they essentially shut down their season. And so I would anticipate that there's not going to be any money coming from those associations, um, you know, in, and so there's going to be a reduction there. So those are really based on how people feel and how quickly they get back out. Now, you know, I'm hopeful that on the revenue, on the um, restaurant side of things that, you know, people have been, um, in quarantine, they've been, you know, in their houses and they've been, you know, cooking their own food and eating their own food and they're ready to get out, they're ready to, you know, go out to eat, they're ready to have some drinks and, you know, be, you know, get out and about and that might help us out. Um, so I think this is kind of a bad scenario, but it, it could be worse. Um, and that's kind of, but I don't, I'm trying to be a little optimistic, but also a little conservative. So I hope this is worst case scenario, but it, it could be a little worse, depending on how long this lasts. And remind everybody, just for frame of reference, when we're talking about half a million in reserves for the general fund, and then 133,750 budgeted use of reserves for Hotel Melto, what are those balances now? Those balances now, and hold on. Reserves in the general fund are somewhere around 18 million. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're, well, the, yeah, they're around 18 million. That is true. They're, they are around 18 million. Um, and I, I can't get my drive right now. Um, but it's around 18 million in the general fund, and we're around 800,000, 800, I believe, in hotel motel. 800,000, 900,000 in hotel motel. Um, so All half right. a million is a huge hit to the general fund. Um, but it also depends, you know, it's not a huge hit. Um, it's not going to break us to use our, our reserve money. Christian, is that unassigned or is that, I mean, that 18 million in the general fund, is that an unassigned fund balance? Yeah, I, I was thinking I'm going to let me back in now. Let me go to that file real quick. 
and a, a question regarding the only expense side this does include the the um, three percent for public safety that we've proposed in the budget for january it does include the three percent for january yes sir is there anything in there for the rest of our employees um yes it also includes the normal um in, in contingency we've um budgeted a normal um merit raises on based on the one and a half to three and a half percent that y'all have historically done um but it's also in the same contingency which means that if things don't go like want them to um that um y'all want to that y'all do not have to to do those merit raises in january Okay. Can you tell me how much? Can you tell me how much sorry, those Courtney. two items account for? The, the the merit raises are a little over three hundred thousand, and the um hold on, and the um the half a year for public safety is um, about a hundred and it's hundred seventy four thousand dollars for um including salaries and FICA. Also in here is the paramedic increase that we talked about giving them two and a half percent and that's about forty one thousand. So um you're looking at you know you're looking at two hundred thousand plus for public safety and you're looking at three hundred thousand for uh, merit okay. okay so all together we're looking at love just over Five hundred thousand, five and a quarter, somewhere thereabouts, uh, for merit, public yeah. safety, and the paramedics. And then, when do they? Um, when do those kick in? Um, they would kick in in the in uh, January first. And the idea, oh. Tim, was the idea, Tim, was you know when we had this discussion when we last met, moving that from the beginning of the fiscal year to January, with the thought of you know, if things change um, and and we're not able to do that, um, then we have that discussion. Then, like Kristen said, we're not, we don't know how long this is going to last, what the impact is. You know, in a few months, we'll have a lot better idea uh, in six months, even seven, eight right. months where we're at. So, the, you know, we left those in there, but moved them to January just so that we've got some flexibility about how we're going to implement that and when and all that. Right. Yeah. Wasn't that only on public safety? The others would be for a full year, wouldn't it? Or, yeah, they're, they're, they're always January 1st. Okay. Uh, and then I'm wrong. I apologize. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I looked but, at, I looked at, it is about 18 million in unassigned, um, but that, that doesn't yeah. take into account any that we're going to dip into to finish this fiscal year. Still a healthy right. fund balance. I'm not. It's still healthy, but there is um, 18 million approximately in there. Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, oh, oh! I, I know what it was. So this this 500 in in raises, five and a quarter, we'll say, is a six month number. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's the same way we've done it in the past, right, Kristen? Yeah, for the for the for the merit raises, yeah, we always do those in January. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So, um, with that being said, um, since we are um, projecting a use of reserves, uh, and we talked about this last time, I did not, you know. Tammy and I and Jared, we talked earlier today, and I did not feel like it was a responsible thing to come to the council with a budget um, that included personnel additions when we're having to use our reserves. Um, the department submitted um, a lot of different positions. I think we had 19 um, positions that came in. Um, I, think I can tell you that. Hold on. Um, 19, then we had 19 positions that, yeah. and um, and so the only one that was left in there to be added is the museum one. It's a part-time position because there's a, a a safety 
you know, issue potentially. Jenny's in the museum by herself all the time and people are coming in and out of that building and she's the only one there. And so she's expressed that, you know, it's a safety issue and that she would like someone to be there. And so um, included in the budget is a part-time um, museum personnel so that you, you know you be there with her when the doors are open to the museum she you know, is not by herself all the other positions have been removed from the budget um, i spoke to all of the all of the department heads today and let them know that that's what we are presenting to y'all tonight and that would be you know what we plan to present in the budget book um, when we you know do this for the whole council um, in a couple of weeks and you know they all understood they understood the times that we were in and um you know i told them that we were going to bring it to y'all and y'all could weigh in if you wanted to but um i think tammy and i feel that bringing you a budget with new personnel when we're showing these losses in um, revenues and also showing a use of reserves would just be irresponsible so that's what we're that's what we're going to present to you um there are several reclasses that um, we're going to leave in because you know we feel like those reclasses are warranted and we feel um, you know there are current employees and um, you know we we want to go ahead and move forward with recommending those to y'all um, so those, those are in there but the new personnel are not so. person how much is the um, any idea what the cost of the reclassifications is Yes. Hold on. Let me pull that up. So the reclasses are um, about fifty-six thousand um, dollars budget impact, and those are effective July first. So it would be fifty-six thousand dollars to the budget to reclass those thirteen positions. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. And also just. Um, from our last meeting and that we had, and I also have spoken to all the department heads about this, um, y'all had okayed four new positions in the FY20 budget that were supposed to be effective April 1st. Um, one of those was already filled because it was just a um, someone from within filled that, that slot, but the other three um, have are unfilled and they have been budgeted in our upcoming FY21 budget to start January 1st. So we've also taken a half a year of those salaries out um, in this budget. And that equates to, um, is that in here? No, I don't have that number in here. Um, so um, we've taken that out. So um, the, nine, the 19 positions that we did not recommend in FY21, that saved us in the current budget about 456,000. And then it saves us an annual impact of those positions of 1,120,000. So um, due to the uncertainty of things, we didn't want to add positions this year that are going to have an impact of over a million dollars in our subsequent year budget also. So. Any questions on that? Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um, I already mentioned to y'all that the health insurance, um, we had budgeted our health insurance uh, for fiscal year 20 at five, five million five hundred and 500,000 approximately. Um, looking at the revised projection on that, looks like we're going to be close to 5.8. So like I said earlier, we're going to be about $300,000 over our projection. And then based on the information that we received from our consultant, and, and um, Jared did a fantastic job going through this and looking at things. Um, him and I talked yesterday and we're going to rec we're going to budget for a six million dollar line item for our health insurance next year and that's about a two percent um, increase over our, our revised FY20 projection and it also um, has a little bit in there for the new positions from 20 that are going to come in in January and then um, 
the part-time position in museum would be eligible for um, benefits as well. So it includes um, funds in there for that position as well. Um, the general fund expenditures, um, they're up less than a percent, about 0.6% over um, last year's budget. So um, budget last year was about 53.4 million and um, this year it's gonna be about 53.7 million. Like, like um, you asked a little bit ago, Corky, that includes the raises for public safety and um, in that number, um, the departments have been very, um, they've been very easy to work with. Um, gone to them a couple of times and asked them for money and asked them you know, if there's anything they can do to help us with this budget. And um, we've had about $63,000 cut from our travel, which is about 27% of it, and we had about $45,000 cut out of training by all the departments, which is about 17% of the travel, um, the training. And so um, they've switched to, um, we're going to do some teleconferences, they're going to cut out the out-of-state travel that gets expensive with hotels, um, and they're going to look at doing sessions um, in Georgia that maybe don't require the, the hotel and um, those kind of calls to try to save um, some money for uh, the, the city this year. Um, I would say, you know, even that those are those are good cuts. Um, the departments who have training requirements for certification and for other things, like they're not compromising on those things. Like we've left money in the budget so that they can meet all of their um, certification and continuing education and everything. So there's not any. Um, worry of them, you know, losing any of the certifications that they have. Um, you mentioned earlier that, um, you know, it's about a $1.8 million loss in our revenues due to the COVID-19. And um, we're going to use about half a million dollars out of our reserves to balance the budget. And then um, about a hundred, we're budgeting to use $100,000 of previously committed funds for debt. There's money sitting, there's funds sitting in a um, committed account for debt, um, for the payoff debt. And so for the last couple of years, we've taken about $100,000 out of that line item to um, help offset some of the debt costs. So um, we haven't, I mentioned at the beginning, um, we haven't really changed CIP since it was brought forth from the, um, the committee to to y'all. Um, we've got little, we got a little over 1.4 million dollars in expenditures. Um, there's 20 projects that have been recommended. Um, next year is a big year. Um, currently, it's about 2.2 million dollars, and so we're going to have to think about that and take that into consideration. I had initially. Um, spoke to a couple of departments about, you know, maybe moving some of their current year uh, CIP into fiscal year 22, but um, with a $2.2 million um, list of projects already sitting there, um, it's, that's not really going to help us a whole lot. Um, it's just going to kind of push things off that um, everybody agrees need to be done um, citywide. So um, we have left the CIP. Um, like it was originally presented um, a couple of, I guess that's been a couple of months ago now that we brought that forward. Um, as far as vehicle replacement, y'all know that vehicle replacement is the, is the fund that we, we fund all of our um, vehicles out of. Um, that fund is funded um, based on like an average cost of what we expect to, to spend. And so this year, um, the expenditures out of that account are um, almost $1.3 million. Um, and um, so that's going to be the contribution um, that we're going to, we're going to put in there that funds the current year additions and also um, puts a little, um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. That's the expenditures that we're going to budget to spend a um, million five forty nine. dollars um, that's what we give it a transfer from general fund into vehicle replacement um, because we've got to have the, we've got to kind of stabilize that contribution to help us offset some big years coming up where we have to buy some fire trucks in, um, to that, in 2024 and 2025. And um, 
And we also put some emergency funds into that account in the event that we have vehicles that are wrecked and we have to purchase those like we've had to do for some of our departments um, in the last couple of years. Any questions about that vehicle replacement? Yeah, have we, um, is that the same number or rough, roughly as it was in previous years or is that, do we reduce that at all for next year? I believe it's pretty I'm close to the same number. We have, um, we have some big years for fire trucks in um, in 24 and 25. So the next couple of years, 22 and 23, are you know kind of normal, and then we hit some big years doing some fire trucks a couple of years out. And those the 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 expected replacement for the fire trucks are just planned planned replacements, right? Not gonna. Yeah. Yep. Up in a couple of years, are they? Yeah, they um actually I think one I think we moved one of those up. I think is that correct, Jerry? Didn't we move one we, up? We, we pushed we pushed a fire engine out a year further back a year from FY23 to FY24. And the department's also requesting an upgrade there from a fire engine to a 75 foot ladder truck, which I think is smaller than what we have now but um there are a few different reasons why uh, it makes more sense it's uh, more advantageous to have a ladder truck than an engine and in fact i think it's kind of a combo right an engine and a ladder yeah it's kind of a, yeah and uh, it's a little bit more expensive instead of 600 and change right now the department's got it at 900 so it does increase the cost a little bit um, the department was pretty good with us about uh, rearranging some of their requests so that over the five-year schedule for the fire for the fire department, it's you know it's it's as evenly spaced as you know as we could get uh, given they've got some pretty big vehicles and some pretty expensive vehicles. Um, but that was those were part of the considerations we were thinking about as we scheduled out their replacements. Okay. Um, and um, so the, the the contribution that we're putting into vehicle replacement from general from general fund um, is a little bit higher than that, so that we kind of accumulate money for those bigger years. Um, we started doing it that way a couple of years ago. Um, we have historically just funded the current the expenditures for the current year, but um, couple of years ago, I think I think this is our third year of doing it that way, um, where we are looking to put more in there so that it doesn't, it's not quite such a big hit when we have those big expenditures for fire trucks or, um, you know, sanitation trucks or other other large ticket items that are going to hit that fund. So um, that's that. Um, the other fund that always gets a lot of attention um, is water and sewer. And so, um, Still looking at um, still looking at the the transfer out to general fund. Um, the, the water fund gives the general fund um, they transfer money into the general fund to cover shared services, and so that covers um, you know your finance, your HR. It covers um, a lot of different things that that are that, that that fund would have to pay for itself if it wasn't. They're part of the city and wasn't able to benefit from their shared services. So right now that number is about 1.5, which is up from last year. Um, I believe that's right. Um, and um, but still being looked at, still being tweaked. And then um, we've still got to transfer out to the water sewer CIP fund. Um, money comes out of water sewer and goes into the water CIP fund for all the things that are included on the water CIP um, capital list. And that number is currently at um, $3.3 .3 million that the water sewer fund is going to give to water CIP. And um, also to into account about $10 million worth of um, purchase of water. So all that equates to about $18 million worth of expenditures. And um, hopefully, a little over $20 million worth of revenues. And so um, we are planning on putting money into reserve for the water sewer fund done for a couple of years. Um, 
assets and future um, some future expenditures. If you'll remember the the council members who have been on council um, previously, we had um, to use several million dollars of our water sewer fund balance to um, pay for the water modifications that are being done on Windy Hill um, in anticipation of the the project, the Swath project that's, that's going on. That was about four million dollars. Um, worth of expense that had to be covered. And so it was covered from a combination of water sewer um, fund balance and from the reduction of your projects that um, out of the CIP fund that they were planning on doing. Um, and so, you know, reductions of other projects and pushing them off um, to, to make that full million dollars um, um, be able to be paid. Um, I know sometimes we it's come up at meetings that we are putting cash into our reserves and that we're collecting more money that we're spending. But I think that, you know, history has shown us between the Woody Hill modification and the John Quill um, that came up a couple of years ago that um, it's good to have money in our reserves so that we don't have to go to the bank. We don't have to go and find money and borrow money um, when these kind of things come up that we've, we've got money there to um, move forward like we need to um, for those projects. Kristen, um, I know, and this may be, I think, Frank's on too. Frank, are we, I know we're seeing the water main construction going on on Windy Hill right now. As far as changes and cost overruns, uh, what are we what are we seeing there right now? I mean, that's the type of job that is notorious for having change orders just because the water line's been in there forever and nobody y'all might have a better feel for it than some of my clients but how do we really stand on that project as of now right now uh Corky, we we're, haven't had too many large change orders just minor ones uh so far it's going to schedule okay and Kristen, i think part of that uh, four million dollars that we took out of course i don't know if you mentioned we're, we're looking at getting something back from the county for that I think Derek, weren't you kind of heading that that charge? And can you bring us up to date on that? I don't want to interrupt you, Derek, but I I, um, I don't think we're going to the county for this four million. I think we're going to the county for the Baldwin contract to to help us pay for the twenty nine million contract from Baldwin. Well, it, it all. It, it, it sort of all goes to the bottom line, but yeah. uh, I guess and, and I don't see Derek on anymore. She's still on. Uh, I think he his. stepped away from his desk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and you know that that's all predicated on some additional SWAS funds coming in, and we were we were receiving those funds. Uh, Derek, I was asking about the the uh, negotiations with the county to bring in some additional SWAS funds. Have you heard anything else from them recently? He must be muted. All right, sorry. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the additional money with the SPLOST, um, we've gotten some. We've gotten some commitments from Bob Ott um, for three, four million dollars. Uh, the chairman has been willing to uh, fill the gap. You're talking about for Windy Hill. Yes. I just step away from him. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and um, so I, I feel confident that we're going to be um that that we'll we'll be splitting the baby with them for sure since, since you bring that up corky this is um we we had a meeting with core yesterday um afternoon to get some budget together for SPLOS to put in the budget book and um we are anticipating to have a revised document from them that has the uh, the full cost of the Baldwin contract in there and kind of show the revenues like they are with no additional commitments from Cobb County. And so um, when I get that from them, it kind of, you know, shows you what things look like so that maybe I was hoping maybe it could be a, a tool that um, that Derek, you could use when you have those conversations with um, with them. Um, and so once I have that, I will share that um, with y'all so you can kind of see what that looks like. All right. One one other item of, of question, I guess, is the uh, 
I've seen it in the past where you have actually presented us with a five-year look. Um, is that something that's fairly easy for you to put together and based on what we're seeing now? A five-year look on on, on the uh, budget and where we were with what's going to what our expenditures are, like the fire truck and things like that. Um, yes, yeah, you'll get when you get the um, when you get the budget book. Um, it'll have the same documents that it's had historically, so you'll see a five-year look at our CIP. Um, you'll see a five-year look at our vehicle replacement. Um, in the personnel justifications book that y'all received via email a couple of weeks ago, it, it gives you a, there's not dollars associated with it, but that gives you like a five-year look at what the departments are looking at as far as personnel. Um, so that, that'll be, that'll be a part of the budget book that y'all historically received. You'll see that again this year. Did that answer your question? You did. Yes. Um, is is that most of your presentation? Um, yeah, I'm I'm good. I mean, I just want to kind of I just want to kind of give you all a heads up of what was coming your way. So okay, I, I'm gonna make a, a statement here, and this is this is my own opinion. I, I'm I'm very nervous about the uh, about the rest of this year and, and about the first quarter of next year. Uh, you know, I believe this our economy is going to recover, but I'm I'm no economist by any means. But I, I'm I'm very uh, I'm very nervous about the the raises that we're proposing here and the perception of the public out there that many of them now are unemployed and I mean taking pay cuts in their jobs and we're we're dishing out raises and that's a just a concern of mine I, I'm I'm just going to express it just like it is um, I'm not saying no I'm just saying I'm, I'm, I'm I want it to be brought forth and and let's um, let's think about it and discuss it and do the right thing. Well, I think we I think we have done the right thing by moving it to January to see where we are in the process by that time and what the impact is. I think that's the right thing because it's the responsible thing. And if that time comes when we don't, you know, and, and things are different or they're better or they're worse, at least we'll know the playing field and we can make a better decision then. And then Derek, I, I, we talked about this a little bit too. The, the the question is in my mind is what's what's the best perception out there for the, for our employees? Is it to to give them the indication that we are going to give them a three percent raise in January plus merit raises that we're talking about? So it's potential that you know I think top of the top of the rank on the merit raises is three percent. So some people could get a six percent raise. Um, is it the best perception out there to give them that um, that idea up front and and hopefully not, but possibly have to take it away? Or is it? I mean, I think you can communicate it in January and, and, and give it to them in January. I mean, I think you can com communicate it in a way that I mean, I think generally everybody understands the environment that we're in right now. And look, these folks thought that they were probably going to get this three percent. At the, be at the beginning of the fiscal year, right, um, is my guess. And so moving it back, I mean, they, they have to understand that. And when we present this, we say, look, we, everybody needs to understand here that things are going to change. We don't know whether they're going to get better quicker or we're going to be in this longer or whatever. But as long as I think it's how we frame it. Um, but if we take it out entirely and just give up on it now, what message does that send to our employees? So I'm, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate. I'd rather keep it in there. With the hope that we can, with that we can do this, um, then then just take it off the table entirely. I, I understand, and I'm I'm not arguing that point. We're just we're looking at a five hundred thousand dollar expenditure for for twenty twenty one budget, but it's actually a million dollar expenditure um, for a full year's budget. And um, you know that's it's it, it's a big hit. I'm 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 not I'm not saying right here I'm I'm not in support of it, but it's something that uh, that I gotta I gotta make right in my own mind. This might not matter, um, but maybe just from a like you know from a perception standpoint, it's currently shown in the departmental budget, uh, in fire department's budget. 
as a line item. That's correct, right, Jared? It's in their line item. And so if it would, if it would, if we move that to contingency so that it showed up in contingency, just like the merits do, where, you know, I mean, I think it's maybe semantics here, but maybe if it showed up in, if it showed in the contingency where the merits are, which are, you know, based on y'all's decision to start that in January, instead of it being in their budget, maybe it would, um, presentation wise, it, you know, it wouldn't feel like you're taking something away from them because it wasn't in their budget to start with. It was in contingency. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Well, I think it does, Kristen. It's a good idea. So if it's if it's out of the budget in contingency, um, does that affect the budgeted five hundred thousand dollars shortfall? No, no, because it, it's just it's going from their it's going from their line item, their departmental line item, into the contingency expense line item, which is where the merit raises are. So it, it has no effect on the use of reserves. It's just simply a presentation of. Um, it's not in your budget, it's in contingency, and people, you know, they know that if it's in contingency, it's contingent upon action, I guess, and so mm -hmm. uh, it's not in their line item, and it feels like you're taking something away from them. It's just, right. a, in, my, in mind, it's a perception thing, but um, if we're going to kind of put them in the same bucket and say that we're going to look at them the same way we look at merit raises, then maybe having a contingency is a better place for it. My personal opinion, leave it in the budget. Leave it in the fire line item? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, Corky, in essence of one of, I agree with, I think your sentiment of your statement, which is it's going to be tough, right? I mean, you know, we're, we're making guesses on what the revenue shortfalls will be. But um, yeah, I think we just have to be prepared for to make some difficult, uh, difficult choices and decisions. I agree. Uh, it, it's semantics where it is. Um, I mean, but I, and, and I'll, I'll say one other thing too: reserves or are set aside for this very reason. Yeah. Um, and the city is has has been very good. I'm. I, I feel like my job as on the city council is protecting what the previous city councilmen have done over the years, and they've done a very good job. Hopefully, I can leave it in as good a shape or better shape when I leave as as what they did to me. So, it, you know, however we do it, if it's reserves or if it's in the budget, I don't I don't think it's a I don't think it's a big issue, but. Um, you know, I, I, I certainly want to make the right decision on whether or not it's it's there um, and, and do what's best for the employees. And, and and the perception is among the employees is a big is a big deal. So however we do it, uh, we just have to make the we make the best decision. You know, whether it's in reserves or, or in the budget, I don't know. I have to think about that one a little bit. And I'll just say, you know, I've said this, you know, some people, y'all who have been on council have heard me you know, say this before in meetings is that, you know, we don't typically, it's not a good practice to use your reserves for operational costs. You typically use your reserves and you know, go into those funds for unforeseen things that are going to be, you know, one time, you know, expenses that weren't planned for. You don't typically use reserves to fund your operations. Um, however, I think that because we all, you know, this this loss of revenue is hopefully going to be temporary. Hopefully, you know, things are going to come back. And so um, we are using this reserves for operational costs, but I think it's just because this is a temporary um, reduction and it's going to rebound and we wouldn't want to um, use reserves to continue to cover operations going forward which is one of the reasons why um, we don't have new positions in this budget because we don't want to fund new positions based on a use of reserves. Um, so I just want to put that out there that, you know, I don't, I'm not in any way recommending that we cover operational costs with reserves because that is bad practice, but because this is a temporary 
loss of revenue due to what's going on, um, I think this it's okay to use them to cover some operational costs for for one year, but it would not be advisable to use these reserves to cover operational costs going forward. So I just wanted to put that out there. Makes sense. And the reality is we're, we're gonna have to watch this uh, as I know our, our great staff is doing anyway, uh, and all of us as leaders are doing the same thing. We're gonna have to watch this uh, on a daily and weekly basis. Uh, you know, I keep telling folks uh, in a professional setting, we gotta focus on tomorrow, not worry about next year at this point, because it is unchartered territory. So I, I agree with uh, a lot of what's been said and relieve it. Uh, we do have, uh, I believe, a strong obligation to to our staff uh, for when we do power through this, and we will. Uh, so I, I think it's a, a very measured approach and the right the right course at this point. Any other questions or comments or anything we need you want us to look at or work on or um, get back to you on? Chris, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I miss it. Right in the beginning, uh, me, we talked, you talked about it, but where do we expect to finish fiscal year 20? We, um, we expect, we, we expect we're going to go into our reserves. I don't know how much yet. I was um, telling them that there's a, I haven't really seen a, a big slowdown in expenditures right now. Um, and, you know, so we've encouraged departments to not spend unless they have to um, and to be conservative on that but um, our biggest expenditure is personnel and personnel related costs and those are you know y'all made a commitment that those are not going to change and so um, I, I think we're going to have to dip into our, our reserves a little bit um, based on some revenue shortfalls that they were having Kristen and, and Tim, I'm, I'm going to follow up a little bit on that question. Is there any way over the next week or 10 days we can get a better feel for that? I mean, I, I know what you're saying. It's a it's a, yeah. it's a moving target. Yeah. But but if, if we can get a better feel for that, I think it'd help me to make some decisions on this next budget as well. Yeah, what I could, um, what I had already, I kind of run some numbers today and I've kind of, I kind of highlighted some of our revenues that are, already behind where they should be for the year and that I think are not going to, you know, probably not going to collect very much for the rest of the year. So um, I was going to send y'all something like that. I was just going to kind of say, hey, these are some revenue shortfalls that I'm seeing that I think are going to stay consistent. This is what this could translate to. And then also do a little bit of projections on the expense side of, you know, where salaries are going to end up and some other things to kind of give you a, a better picture. So I think within the next, you know, week, week and a half, I could have something to you. Pretty good. So just, I mean, kind of, kind of to tell you now, like the, um, let me open up my spreadsheet right here. Um, like Parks and Rec, obviously, is a revenue stream that is, you know, they're not collecting any money, so. You know that one is going to fall short of the budget by you know about two hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars. We're going to be short on that. Um, let's see, um, property taxes because you know those those are got some delinquents out there. I, I'm not optimistic we're going to collect on those, so we're we could be about four hundred thousand dollars short on our uh, property taxes. Let's see. Um, we're looking at, at business licenses because there's an anomaly there that we're not quite sure of what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let me hit some of the other high ones. Um, our court fees, um, they were tracking really good, but y'all know that, you know, things have been put off um, until the middle of May. And so um, some people are going ahead and paying their fines, but, you know, some people aren't. And so, you know, right now, that that revenue line item is about four hundred thousand dollars short of where we budgeted it to be. So if 
the courts come back online and we have court and people start paying their fines, you know, that could rebound some, but right now that's about $400,000 short of where it's supposed to be. Um, the, the hotel motel transfer into the general fund, that's also, you know, about three seven, or close to 400, it's 377. Um, and so there is a lag on that one because by the time, you know, like people have, people collect the revenue and then they have to submit it to the city. And then there's a portion that goes to the exhibit authority and comes back and everything else. And so there's a little bit of a lag on that, but I'm thinking, you know, no one's in hotels. And so that one's probably going to end up, you know, we're probably going to have, you know, at least 250, maybe $300,000 um, in that line item that we're not going to, you know, receive in. Um, so those are just some of the, you know, just the quick ones looking at my spreadsheet that kind of, you know, jumped out at me. But, you know, that's, 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 you know, over a million dollars. That's, you know, maybe close to $2 million worth of um, revenue that's not, you know, going to come in. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So. What you're saying, we could conceivably, and I think we already had a, you were talking already about dipping into reserves before all this happened for some amount, or is that included in what you're just saying? Yes. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're going to have. What you just if, said. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So conceivably, based on what you're saying, we could dip into reserves this year for two million. We could, well, if our expenses, you know, if our expenses fall off, because right now, let me pull that up, hold on. Right now, our expenses for the general fund, So our general fund right now, um, we are at about 75% of actual, which is pretty much line with where it needs to be for this time of year. Um, and so, you know, um, there's essentially 13, we budgeted um, $54 million worth of expenditures. Um, and um, we've spent close to 39. So there's about, you know, there's 13,000, um, a little over 13,000 out there that has been budgeted that hasn't been been spent. So, um, you know, if we cut several million dollars out of our expenditures, you know, that's going to help us not have to go into our reserves by 2 million. Um, I haven't projected out the salaries to tell you of that 13 million, how much of that is, you know, salaries versus how much is other operational costs. Um, but, you know, if departments follow the instructions that they were given, um, sorry guys, my dog is getting stuff off my desk. Um, if they follow the guidance they've been given, um, then, you know, hopefully we can offset that loss in revenue with, you know, decreases in our expenditures as well. Okay. I, I, I think in the next, you know, hopefully, like I say, in the next week to 10 days, do the best you can, Kristen. I can't ask any more. Yeah, I'll send you something. And Corky, I was going to mention, I mean, I know this is a budget com council committee meeting, but any changes that we propose, any information um, that uh, Kristen will generate, we will be sure to bring that forth to the entire council. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear, that anything that we propose, we will make sure that all of you all are aware of it. Um, during, you know, possibly an upcoming uh, work session. Point well taken. Thank you. I mean, I think we get the get the idea, but um, I don't know what could be cut back or restricted. But I think that conversation needs to continue to happen on the staff level, right? Just to be looking for anything to reduce. The 13 million by anything close to 2 million to try to break even because we're going to be in this bit of a revenue mess for, you know, for a period of time, right? So, yeah, and I mean, I absolutely. think residents, I think residents will, you know, uh, understand and appreciate it, right? When some projects go on hold just because we don't, you know, they don't have the they don't have the revenue to do the things they want to do, and the city doesn't either. So, I think it's very uh, very understandable. Look, at least in my time, you know, a little over four years, my experience is this city does 
everything that we do is in a fiscally responsible manner uh, and posture and, you know, adapting to situations like this, unprecedented situations. I'm confident that our staff and, and us as an elected body will make the decisions that we need to make to, to continue to have that fiscally responsible uh, approach and, and get what we need to do what we need to do here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't have any other questions at this point. Well, um, thank you everybody for joining us and for listening to me ramble on about this stuff. I appreciate it. And um, <laughs> I'll, I'll get you um, the information that I can, um, you know, next week. And um, if you have any questions you know, about that or you need anything else, just, you know, please let me know and I'll try to get it to you as soon as I can. <laughs>